Father, as we come before you today, understanding a little, a little bit how you work, how you're always there pushing us and guiding us and directing us, are you always there reaching out to us with your love, understanding, and grace. Your mercies cannot easily be counted, Father, and we know all the ways that you've worked in our lives and continue to work. You've given us the Spirit, and it is through that Spirit that we get discernment and understanding of your Scripture, and today we would ask for that. We would ask as we go through your word today that a, a deeper meaning would come forth to us, that would be cemented in our hearts, that we would understand a little bit better about the kind of people that we're supposed to be. So, Father, we pray that you just be here with us. Bless all those that are here or that will be here. We thank you for all things, especially for Christ. It is in Christ's name that we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, let's start out with, uh, we ended up verse 29. Remember from last week uh, where, you know, verse 28, if you will, um, the disciples are asking Jesus, you know, what do we need to do to work the works of God in multiple plural form? Jesus answers, says, this is the work, cuts it down to a singular, uh, is that you believe in him who he sent, which is not a work at all, but it's, it's, it's belief, it's, it's trust, it's faith, it's understanding. All right, that's where we ended. Now we're going to pick up in verse 30. Verse 30. Therefore, they said to him, What sign will you perform that we may see it and believe you? And what work will you do? Our fathers ate manna in the desert, as it is written, He who gave them bread from heaven to eat. Now, good morning, Star. How are you? Oh, so glad you found it. <laughs> I'm so glad you found it on Monday morning. Um, we're John chapter 6, verse uh, 30. Verse 30. We're going to start with. Yes, good morning. All right. Now, um, immediately what we're seeing here uh, is that they're, they're, they're saying, prove to us who you are. Um, verse 30. Therefore, they said to him, what sign will you perform that we may see and believe you? And what work will you do? Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you're getting it. Some, some folks aren't getting it. Um, I, was, I was just saying before, before we went on here, before we went live, this, week, this next week is going to be back to normal. We'll, we will be, if you're interested, we will be meeting uh, in person on Sunday. So, anyway. Um, and then Wednesday night, I'm not sure what we're going to do, but yeah. All right. So, this is what we tend to do with God. We tend to say, you know, oh, you know, God, give me some concrete evidence. Show me who you are, and I'll, and I'll believe. I'll do everything. You know, it's like we make all these false and bottomless promises fully knowing that we're not going to follow through with it, right? So they give him this, they give Jesus this example, verse 31. Our fathers ate manna in the desert, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. All right, remember that, verse 32. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. What Christ is trying to bring them around to understanding is that no matter what it is, no matter where it comes from, ultimately it comes from God first, right? It, it, it comes from God. And too often, too often, we don't make that link or that connection, right? We, we don't make that link. We don't make that connection. Uh, sometimes, you know, we, we like to attribute those things to someone or something else or just circumstances in general. And we forget that 
connection that we so desperately need to understand is that no matter what, all things come from God. All things, right? That's what Jesus is telling him there. God gave him the bread. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven, right? Verse 33, For bread, for the bread of God, is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. You know, it's astounding to me that at this point, everything that they've, they've experienced, everything that they saw, they still have very little understanding. They have very, they have very little understanding, if any. Right? If any. Verse 36. Verse 36. But I said to you that you have not seen me yet. Do you not believe? I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. Exactly what we were just talking about. How, how can you not? Like we look back on it and we're like, were these guys just... <laughs> Were they that spiritually blind? And the answer is yes. <laughs> and the answer is yes. And not just them. Look at the people around you. Even people who claim to be Christians and have this just critical spirit and they they keep wanting to live in the law and 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 it, it astounds me. It it astounds astounds me that all that we have and all the scripture that we have that speak of this Paul says if you if you if you if you're trying to keep the law if you're living in the law then you're a debtor to the law and the, and the cross benefits you nothing like why can't why can't new testament believers understand that Christ changed everything including the law now He did confirm many of the elements of the law. And there's some of that he did not confirm. And in fact, actually pushed back on. And I don't want to get into that too much today, but uh, as we get going through John here, we will discuss this in more depth and more understanding as we get through it. All right. <clears throat> Verse 37. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. Uh, he's talking about what? Eternal security. Right? That's what he's talking about. He's listening. Every, the Father calls. That's, that's, that's what he does. The Father calls. When the Father calls, who keeps the covenant? The Son. Or keeps us. Right? The covenant, us. We're all connected. We're all part of it. Verse 38, he explains a little further. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And the will of God the Father is, all be saved, none should perish. Pretty simple to understand. Now, let's go over to Exodus 16 and verse 15. All right? And so he says in verse 15, in verse 15, I sent this out, you should have this on your sheet. So when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, This is the bread which comes, which, mm -hmm, this is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. This is the thing which the Lord has commanded, to let every man gather according to one's need. One omer, it's a measurement, for each person, according to the number of persons, let everyone, let every man take for those who are in his tent. Okay. We know that things that happened in the Old Testament were a foreshadowing of what Christ was going to do in the future. We know that, right? It, it's easy to see. It's easy to understand. Um, let, me, let me take you over real fast to Exodus... Six. You don't have to turn there. I can get it real fast here. 
Um, I just wanted to touch on this because we're going to start getting into uh, the I am statements. Is it Exodus 4 6? 4 6. That was 6 4. Yeah, it's six six four. Six four. Okay. Let, let me pick it up in let me pick it up in verse two here. We're gonna give you a little foundation. Okay. And God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty, but by my name, Lord. I was not known to them. I also established my covenant with them. This is the important part. God established the covenant to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage in which they were strangers. There's a whole concept and understanding that we're seeing. That God gave them a land that wasn't theirs. They, they, their, their identity was not in the land or in the place. Their identity was in God. They were just passing through. That's the whole understanding and purpose that that is not their permanent residence. All right? They were, they were given that by God. They were, they, they were strangers. All right? Strangers to the world. And verse 5. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptian kept in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. Therefore, say to the children, I am the Lord. Here's the important part. Here's the important part. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, number one. I will rescue you from their bondage, number two. I will redeem you with an outstretched arms, with great judgments, three. I will take you as my people, and I will be your God. And then you shall know that I am the Lord, your God, who brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will bring you into the land which I swore now, here's the important part. God says, I will do these things, right? These I will statements, especially uh, the third one that we talked about. I will redeem you with outstretched arms, all right? Remember that. Keep that in mind. I will do these things. That, that gives us a couple of hints and understanding is he hasn't done it yet, right? He says, I will do this. I'm done it yet. Interesting. Interesting. All right. What Jesus is saying, as we get into the meat of this book of, of John, the Gospel of John, what Jesus is saying is, when he says, I am these things, and he's going to talk about this, he's going to talk, talk about the I am the bread of life. And so when we realize that and understand, all right, all those I will statements that God made, I made a covenant with your fathers. I, I haven't done it, but it will do it. All right, I will redeem you with outstretched arms, Christ on the cross. Re understand, Jesus is fulfilling all the things God said I will do, and Jesus says, I did do, or I am doing, or I have done, right? So keep that in mind as we get through there and how they're all connected, all right? Uh, let's go over to Lamentations 3 now. Lamentations 3, verse 22, it says, Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in Him. You know, think about that. You know, God... God woke you up this morning, gave you another day. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Listen, we have to realize and understand that our eternal security is, is secure. We don't have to worry about that, right? Lamentations 3.22, a foretelling of what Christ was going to do. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. That's why Jesus came, right? That's why we can understand that. Right? They are new every morning. In other words, they never fail. They never go away. 
Matter of fact, I will say they get stronger every day, right? We, as we grow in faith and understanding that that within us grows stronger, right? Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion. It doesn't matter what happens in this world. It doesn't matter what other people say. It doesn't matter what other people do. You do what you're called to do, right? You do the best you can with what you have. It's all you can do. It's all you can do. Let everything else go. Matthew 5, right? The Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount. 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. You see, who we are inside comes back to us. If you are merciful, guess what you are shown? Mercy. If you forgive, guess what you are shown? Forgiveness. That's what, that's what Jesus meant when he told Peter to put down the sword. What did he say? He who lives by the sword dies by the sword. What's in your heart is coming back to you. If you don't really know how to love, then learn to love. And you can't just love the easy people, right? you got to love the difficult. People you don't agree with. People, people that are different than you. People that are, you know, not the same. That's why God made us different. Interesting. All right, let's go back into our text now. Into our, let's go back into our text. We are in uh, verse 39, verse 39. Remember, we just ended in 38. I came to do the will of him who sent me. Verse 39. And this is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should use lose nothing, but should raise it up on the last day. All right. People that, that and I've talked to them in great detail about this stuff, people that think that somehow God's going to cast you out or, or that you can lose your salvation. This is one of the verses that I always talk about where Jesus says, I have not lost any that the Father has given me. So two things are happening there. Either you're wrong about the, you thinking you can lose your salvation, right? You're wrong about eternal security, or Jesus is a liar. It's one or the other, right? Can't be, can't be both. And confronted with the reality and the truthfulness of Scripture, it's amazing how people try to contort themselves and twist to, to try to make what they believed fit. We do the same thing with ourselves, don't we? We... We want to believe something, and we hear something that reinforces that, and we accept that. Then we hear something that pushes back on that. And even if it has fact in it, we naturally, in our human existence, in our nature, we reject that, right? Even if it's the truth. It's a very dangerous thing. It's a very dangerous thing. We accept the truth and then apply the truth to our lives, not the other way around. We don't have our lives hear the truth and then twist the truth to fit. All right. Verse 40. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I'll raise them up on the last day. This is one of God's promises. Everybody that accepts Christ, that's what we get. Big secret, right? Even, even Jonah, even Jonah knew that, right? What did he say? What did Jonah say? I don't want to go to Nineveh. Why didn't he want to go to Nineveh? Because he said, "I know you to be gracious and good, Lord. And if I go and they hear your word, they will repent and you'll save them." And I don't think they deserve salvation. How many people today? How many things that are just outright faults being taught in the name of God people walking 
in disobedience, trying to live in the law, where Paul clearly says, no flesh shall be justified in the law. All have fallen short, Romans 3, all have fallen short of the glory of God. The wages of sin are death. If it's counting as debt against you, then, then it, the wages count against you. I'm, it's so easy to understand this. Verse 41. Verse 41. Then the Jews, the Jews then complained about him because he said, I am the bread which gets, comes down from heaven. Interesting. Why would they complain? What, what, he wasn't the picture of, of the Messiah that they were expecting, right? They, they had this preconceived notion in their head, even though scripture laid it out for them in, in clear understanding. This is what he's going to look like. This is what he's going to do. He's going to be a humble man of no reputation, right? It, they wanted the Messiah what? To come in power and strength. They were under Roman occupation. They wanted the Messiah to come and set up his kingdom, wipe out the Romans, right? Here comes this lonely carpenter's son. Not particularly handsome, no matter what your pictures look like. That's what scripture tells us. He's unassuming, he's humble, filled with truth, grace. Mercy loves everybody, even the tax collectors whom they all hated. Yeah, see the picture? This wasn't who they were looking for. Is God ever? You know, who, who, who we, our pre preconceived notions of who we believe God is and how we want him to be and and he comes and is, it's, it's a shock to our, to our psyche, to our system, to our spirit. Wow, that's who he is? And for those who, who are able to accept that, that God's not the God that I have up here. God's the God who fills up this in here. Let's go over to John 10. Let's go over to John 10, verse 25. He says, Jesus answered them. He says, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. And remember, when we were doing Nicodemus by the fire, what is the one thing Nicodemus told him? We know, you, we know the Pharisees, we all had a discussion. We know that you come from God, for no one can do the things that you do. And that's what, exactly what Jesus is saying there. He says, look, is anybody else doing this stuff? No. Now, that testifies of who I am, right? I told you. I showed you. You don't believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep, as I said to you. My sheep. They hear my voice. And I know them. And they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. And I and my Father are one. All right. Again, eternal security. You think this is important to God? Absolutely. Absolutely it is. He needs us to understand this. Right? Because there's so many people that misunderstand Scripture. They put their own understanding in there. They twist it. They turn it. They try to scare people. That Listen, you make a poor witness if you're walking around on eggshells all the time. You make a poor witness for God. I'm just putting that out there for you right now. If you're not secure in your security, how are you going to talk to somebody else about it? How are you going to bring them to, to, to Christ? You're not. How are you going to tell them about the hope that you have? What hope? You're afraid to lose your own security, your salvation. How are you going to talk to somebody else about their salvation? You're not. You're not. What does Jesus say there? 
neither can anyone snatch you from my hands. See, if you're there, you're there. And certainly they can't take you from my Father's hands, and we are one. Now, the question isn't, am I there? Or, or the question isn't, can I, can I lose it? My question is, am I there? That, that's the question, right? We, we, and I, I've talked about this before. We always ask the wrong questions, right? Obviously, from what we've been reading today, there's no possible way you can lose your salvation. The question is, are you there? Right? What did Jesus say? <clears throat> uh, my sheep, verse 27 of John 10, my sheep, they hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. They hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. A humble man, a kind man, was there for everyone put himself last what did he tell his disciples when they were arguing who's going to be greater in the kingdom he says you want to be great in my kingdom then serve others make it about somebody else those who are great those are the ones that hear Jesus name remember when we talked about Jesus Jesus does not desire sacrifice but mercy mercy right to be the kind of person that loves people no matter what, understands. Listen, everybody's got problems, man. Everybody's got issues. Everybody's broken in one way or another. None of us are broken the same way. We're all broken different. Can broken people come together and love one another? Absolutely they can. Absolutely. Our brokenness and understanding that we are human, we are sinful, we have issues. Can we love one another in spite of those? See, those are those are the true sheep of Christ. I don't have to be perfect. I don't. I don't have to be right. But what I do have to be is loving, forgiving, merciful. Such a good way. Such a good way. Remember, verse 41. The Jews were complaining, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. Okay? Verse 42. And they said, <laughs> is, <laughs> is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it that he comes down and says, I come down from heaven? I come down from heaven. Jesus therefore answered and said to them, Do not murmur among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. He's trying to get through their thick heads, right? He's trying to help them to understand this. To accept God and all that comes with it is no little thing. Matter of fact, it's a pretty big thing. And it can be pretty difficult for some of us, if not all of us. Let's go on to, to verse 45 here. It says, It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Okay. Listen. This takes a lot of pressure off of us as believers in understanding one thing. We live the example. We proclaim the truth. We live the life that we're supposed to. Forgiveness, mercy, love, understanding, loving God loving others when we do that it automatically points people to the place that they're supposed to be pointed to and that's God you yourself can save no one if they don't hear from God if they don't understand right that this is about our relationship our connection to Christ 
you can't fix that. And we so do want to fix that. We want all our loved ones to come to faith, right? We want them to have a little bit of what we feel and what we taste and what we understand, right? To be secure. Listen, when we go to heaven, we want our, our, our loved ones to be there, don't we? Of course, of course we do. Of course we do. This is the hardest thing for us to understand. We have to have faith and trust in God and love, all right? And God has told us clearly, he doesn't want any to, any to perish. He said that his promise is that all who are supposed to be saved, who will accept, will be saved. That's his promise. God promises, that's good enough for me. Verse 46. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except he who is from God, he has seen the Father. And so we're going to get into this a little bit more uh, next week, and we're going to talk about the actual experience and, and what that means, and, and you know, um, part of the reason that Christ came is so that we could experience God in a more tangible way, right? He, he lives the way we lived. He, he was born into this world, uh, human experience, lives the sinful life that we can't live and didn't don't live, um, all so that we can have eternal life. All right. In a nutshell, that's what that means. Hebrews eight gives us some insight in verse ten here, and I want to lead you through this. He says, "I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be their God." And they shall be my people. Okay? We get the Spirit. Changes. We have the helmet of salvation. Changes our way of thinking. Right? Changes the way we see things. Verse 11. None of them shall teach his neighbor and none his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them. And I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds. I will remember no more. In that he says, a new covenant, right? Not the old covenant, a new covenant. He has made the first obsolete. That's why we don't live in the law. That wasn't The law was not given for us to follow. It was given for us to realize we can't follow it. Puts the caveat on this. Now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. That's why we, as New Testament believers, don't live in the law. All right? And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Jesus has changed. You know, think of it in, in a rational form. Jesus changed everything, didn't he? Of course he did. Did he not then help us to understand the law and to help us understand the manner in which we're able to live in his righteousness. Yes. All right. Let's go ahead and pray. And I will let you guys go. And uh, thanks for popping on uh, in, in the off time here. Um, I want to go ahead and uh, lead you guys a little prayer here. If uh, you guys are with me here, uh, just go ahead and uh, repeat this after me. And then uh, I think it's good to do this, you know, every once in a while. Uh, let's go ahead and, and, and pray. I want you to guys to, uh, to pray this with me afterwards. Uh, Father, I confess that I am a sinner and that I have sinned against you. I guess I ask forgiveness for that sin. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son and that he lived and died as full payment for that sin. I ask that your Holy Spirit come live in my life forever. And I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. It is in Christ's name that we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You guys have a wonderful day. Uh, thank you for, for popping on and joining me. Um, I hope to see you guys this Sunday. Uh, you guys just... And just, just hug one another, love one another. It's what it's all about. All right. God bless.